Hey everyone. Surprise. What's up, everyone? <laughs> yeah, I know. We are off our uh, regular uh, time schedule. Yes. We are going to be doing a little bit of traveling. So, welcome to our live stream. Yeah, it's Sunday. Yeah, cool, guys. Um, <laughs> Dave D, what's up? Josh, Archer, good to see you guys. Paul, J.M. Rodriguez, J.G., Jeremy, what's Tony up? Liao, Sergio, Giovanni. Giovanni, Tony Liao, yep. Annabelle Martinez. Sundown, what's up, buddy? That last one, Manuel. Fox Coit, we're all here. what's up, guys? Uh, right. So, Toby, what do you want to talk about? All right, so, all right, <laughs> let's get into some of these news articles. Yeah. Some really interesting stuff. So... Like I've said many times before, that I think that this year and next year are going to be the mass adoption years, like to where we haven't seen anything yet in terms of mass adoption, whereas the whole world uh, will be hopping onto the onto crypto pretty much. So uh, I forgot what it is, but we are essentially uh, in probably the 1999 phase 1997 and 1999 phase of uh the markets or we just kind of we're, we're kind of edging out of that right now uh in terms of like where the inter internet was and and the dot dot com was but i don't think we're gonna see a bust like what happened because um first of all there's more people on the internet um and i think it's like 84 percent of the pop world population, 89 percent of the world population has internet. So that's like huge. And before, you know, 1997 to, to 2000, there weren't too many people on the internet. You know, I, I remember having to go to say uh, internet cafes to send an email or check stocks or something like that. Um, so this is really interesting. Like this is going to be a really fast phase in my opinion. And I think that's why a lot of people are like big money's buying up Bitcoin, as much Bitcoin and Ethereum as possible. And um, that's why you're gonna see crazy amounts of innovation in, over the next year. So let's go over this. Shopify merchants can now um, accept Bitcoin payments globally. So this is uh, Jack Mahler's uh, strike. Uh, so he, that's through this. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're using the Lightning Network. So the Lightning Network is gonna allow for a lot of transactions and probably pretty cheap as well. And, and some people are like saying that uh, they're not going to use too much KYC. And I think that's bull crap. I think they're, they're, you're going to have to definitely use a lot of KYC through this. Um, I don't see how he's going to get around that. Um, I don't know if he's fighting that or whatever. It but... might be like that now, but give it a few months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or, you know, they get enough traffic, they get enough attention, and they'll be clamped down to just like everyone else. Exactly, yeah. So, uh, here, let's I go mean, there. Shopify is huge. They That's like a lot of online retailers use that payment processor for, yeah. so... Yeah. For all these people are like, oh, but you can't use Bitcoin to pay for anything. No, that's so false. Slowly but surely, yeah. it's seeping in. It's it's just like who said that the internet was not going to do anything? I think uh, back in right, right when it started, I forgot it, but it just reminds me of that stuff. I was like, Heidi that, and I have yes. been saying for yeah, well, Heidi and I have been saying for years that hey, this is going to be a means of payment. You know, there's no. There's no way around it at this point. Um, so you're going to be able to choose which type of payment you want, whether it's Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin, or Ethereum. I mean, Solana. Why not Solana too? Stable coins. Exactly. Stable coins, UST. You know, imagine making like 19.5% or pretty soon May 1st, it's going to be like 18% mm -hmm. on, on Anchor Protocol. But imagine like having your, your cash sitting and they're making you 18% and then like you need to pay for bills and stuff. Like, Wow. This is amazing. This is this is so cool. Yeah. So here, and you know, that's another thing. It's like people hear news like this and they're like, oh, so why isn't Bitcoin or crypto instantly pumping because of this? It It's a slow burn and it slowly accumulates over time. And it is a growing market. It's a growing asset. And with that growth in market cap means it takes more to stimulate crazy price movements as well. Yeah. We're going to talk about crazy, crazy price movements. It's also but... a lot of manipulation because yeah. a lot of big money is getting in right now. Yeah. Big, big money. I'm talking like you have no idea how much money is being or is being poured into this space. Buying Bitcoin over the counter 
And uh, yeah, we're going to get into that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so next story here, Tara, what do you want to say about so 5,000 uh, Bitcoin buy mm -hmm. from Tara uh, LFG, which is their part of their company. That's what they're called. I forgot what they're. I forgot what That's their foundation's <laughs> called, but what, whatever, um, LFG. So yeah, that, another 5,000. And then you have Sailor that's buying some. So, okay, so Sailor right now has about 125,000 uh, for its uh, for micro strategies. And mm -hmm. I think with, with Terra so far, they've done like 38,000 Bitcoin. Mm. So, and then now you have Near which just announced that they're coming out with their stable coin, which mm -hmm. will be USN, and that will provide a 20% API. Yeah. So I think they're going to copy Luna's uh, model, essentially. I think that, you know, this is all experimental, I think, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I really am excited to see this competition with stable coins. USDC and USDT, you guys better freaking, you know, like, Move, like start getting innovative otherwise you're going to get passed up yeah, yeah. well I'll balance it with the security because that could also make you lose some uh, market share sure <laughs> sure no, that, that is true lose some faith in a stable coin that's basically all you have for it going for you yeah what stable coin lost it i think the wave stable coin like went to like 70 something cents and then but it's recovered mostly i think now mm -hmm. but geez that that could freak people out you imagine that like you the one uh, thing, sorry, really boring, you? boring me. The boring <laughs> price of a stable yeah, coin. Geez. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I mean, the one thing it's supposed to do is be stable, and it can't do that. So sure. We, you know. Yeah. Um, a next story. Oh, what here. Uh, Tosio. Tosio. Uh, Toby, what are your th thoughts on MetaHero and Everdome? Still bullish, you know. Uh, keep in mind that Bitcoin is has gone through a consolidation phase, and that you know. If it does that, it's going to drag a lot of coins down. I believe that's what's happening. So, you know, once Bitcoin starts ramping back up, I believe uh, Everdome and um, and MetaHero will definitely rise. And if for those of you who don't know what MetaHero is, MetaHero is pretty much uh, it's a coin that you can. Uh, it, it's a metaverse coin. So what you can do is you can take your like your dog or whatever, and you can put it into this. <laughs> That's our favorite little, little place. I know, I know, <laughs> the way I know. To explain this. <laughs> but Digitize you, your dog. It's pretty much digital. <laughs> yeah. So you can like make a super high definition camera and take all these photos around it, and then you can essentially yeah. place well, your your. It's dog not in. so much like you have that camera. You go to a location that has yeah, a yeah, special yeah. technology yeah. for it. Yeah. So I think that's going to be a big hit later on, essentially when people start really moving into the metaverse, which I think is going to happen. Yeah. Whether people like it or not, people are going to think it's weird. People are think, ah, uh, you know, I think that's stupid, but whatever, you know, it's going to happen. So, yeah. Um. So what's going on here with, let's see. With uh, the new Petro asset. Yeah, okay. So. Also, to cut Toby off real quick, sure, yeah. for those of you who want to follow along with these articles that we're talking about today, all of the links are down below in the video description just for you. Oh, and guys, and, please like and subscribe. And I always forget to say that. We're not trying to pump our channel too much, no, but check out our you, Discord group. Yeah, that's and uh, that's check out our CT Club. Too. We got Anyways. a few things. Cool. So, uh, a new, new Petro asset. This uh, historic um, move could send Bitcoin's price to one million uh, dollars. There's so many things that could happen that could send Bitcoin to a million dollars. Like, uh, but but then it every says month, meanwhile every it, month there's an article like this. But then it says meanwhile Ethereum, BNB, Terra, XRP, Solana, Cardano, Dogecoin are sinking. Why did you put Dogecoin? <laughs> what does that have to do XRP with Petro XRP with Ethereum? Like please guys, like these uh uh, th this is mainstream news at its best, but it is true that this could be potentially something to where people use Bitcoin as a uh, as a to to buy uh, oil. Yeah, so global trade asset. Yeah. So right now they call the U.S. dollar the petrodollar because most oil uh, transactions. Global trade are, it can be settled in U.S. Yeah, dollars. Yeah. So is this kind of inspired because of what Russia said a few weeks ago that they China could pay. Uh, for their oil for in Bitcoin. Yeah, so that's that's gonna be that they're gonna call it probably the Petro Yuan. So I think um, I forgot how many barrels a day that that um, Saudi Arabia uh, uh, digs up or whatever. But 
uh, yeah, they, they are in talks right now to go ahead and actually do part of their oil sales in Yuan. So that could be huge. I mean, think about OPEC. OPEC, the whole reason for OPEC is to keep the US dollar as the reserve currency and the currency that backs oil essentially, or it's backed by oil and military might. So mm. that's pretty much it. <laughs> military might. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then I think our, Iran is actually going ahead and, and, and potentially doing that as well. But mm. man, I can't imagine the US allowing Iran or, or this to happen without a big fight, without yeah. a big fight, because think about it, the whole, the whole point of the U.S. military is to back the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if they lose that U.S. dollar standard... Or, Do you think they'll ever, like, accidentally bomb a Bitcoin mining farm? Is that no, how they're going to... No, no, because, I mean, it's launch so... Launch war against Bitcoin? No, it's so decentralized. There's no way that they can attack Bitcoin. They're going to... But how many, how many countries does the U.S. have a military base in? 70-something countries <laughs> using... 6.4 billion gallons of fuel annually and I'm that's just for the military and I'm not talking about all the human capital <clears throat> all the buildings all the bureaucrats all those politicians that are trying are there just to keep the US dollar alive mm -hmm. plus inflation oh my gosh like it's it's unbelievable. So yeah, that's why we need Bitcoin, and that's why I think Bitcoin is going to definitely be taken over uh, in the future for a lot of people. Um, it's going to be a fight. Uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's so early right now to tell what's going to happen. Um, but a nation like the U.S. is not going to go down without a fight. I'm just letting you know, like it's not. Um, Hua Don Jang asked Jen. I'm sorry, I just butchered your name. Jeez, he asked. <laughs> Um, well, why no. big money is being is buying Bitcoin, but the price is still around 40k. Um, we're gonna touch on this in, in another article as well, but I think it has a lot to do with over-the-counter trades. Um, those are private sales. That means they're not happening on public exchanges like Binance, uh, Coinbase, what have you. So you can't pub like uh, people can't speculate on what the whales are doing over with over the <laughs> over-the-counter trading. Yeah. So it's private, right? So like they can keep accumulating without uh, it having a really big effect on the overall retail market like you and I or anyone else who's kind of like, you know, uh, watching the price like a hawk. So what they might be doing is accumulating now in preparation for when either they're ready to or uh, retail finally starts catching on themselves and then they start buying as well. So sure. it's definitely a way to kind of... Uh, not play such an effect on the market because they obviously don't want to yet. Um, yeah. They can always take those coins that they purchase privately and put them on a private, a public exchange and then make the price go wild, <laughs> do mm. crazy uh, trading mechanisms there. But that's yeah. one idea anyway. For sure. Um, okay, so next article here. Let's see. Goldman Sachs to offer over-the-counter Ethereum options. So this is going to be used for crazy price action and crazy manipulation as well. Yeah. So um, uh, yeah, so uh, over the counter, the reason why they do over the counter is to, um, it, it's for large amounts of money. You know what I mean? So this yeah. isn't just like doing options on say just your regular exchange or whatever. This is like really large money and it's usually a private deal that happens and it's behind closed doors <clears throat> and then they go ahead and do deals that way. So yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I think that also um, big money is going to fall big money as well. And it's, it could make the price just go rampant because you're going to have retail as well, seeing all of these, um, all of these these uh, options or whatever, like wh whether it's a put or whether it's a call. So a call is the price is going up. You're bidding, the price is going up. A put is means the price is going down. So imagine if you're a retail guy and you're following this trend and you're seeing big money putting lots of their faith in like the price is going to go up. So a lot of calls, then they're going to pile in. And then if the, if there's a bunch of puts, they're going to sell. So this is what most people or a lot of people actually do a lot of traders. And that's going to just, people are going to lose their butts because these are so manipulated. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. It's so manipulated. 
Yeah. I wonder if these options have to be settled with like, you know, with a spot with the actual Ethereum or they can just speculate well, on the price. Yeah. So if that's the case, if there's no hard asset underlying these trades or, you know, to be settled in, then that opens door for even more yeah. rampant speculation yeah, in the futures. I don't think it's going to be spot. There's no way it's going to be spot. <laughs> but no, it's not. So this is definitely going to be a way for, for traders to leverage, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and so, I mean, people are going to make a lot of money off this stuff. Uh, but I think the fact that it's being offered by Goldman Sachs is pretty big. Yeah. But I mean, Wall Street wants this stuff. Mm -hmm. Wall Street's going to get what they want, you know, and they're going to see this and go, wow, there's so much money to be made, especially, you know, getting in to where they are now and just, you know, having full control of the market. That's that could be really interesting. But keep in mind, this is probably not the spot spot market. This is not the spot market. This is just calls and options. All right. Mm. Um, so that's in the long run, we are fine. OK, this is not yeah. really this is going to be a short term manipulation. This is going to be uh, decimating weak hands and traders. Yeah. But for us who are dollar cost averaging, it's going to decimate the people who are looking at these things for the future value of what that crypto is going to be rather than, you know, really digging deep yeah. and actually doing their own research. Doing yeah. your own research is always a good idea. Uh, Tosio had a good point. He said, thoughts on Airweave. I heard that whenever there's more traffic on Solana, AR seems to pump since Solana uses them for storing data. There were also talks that Ethereum's old transactions may be stored there as well. That's interesting. I'll have to do some research on that too. Um, yeah, because with Solana, the speed that they offer, it's definitely a trade-off with the amount of information and requirements for running that blockchain is pretty costly. So so costly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what is it to even run a node? I think it's like, se is it $700,000? I think it's something like that. Well, that's just Holy for staking, cow. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's just for running a staking yeah. node. And, but also, so there's like the investment side of it to qualify for rewards or the, also just the investment in the hardware side of it to mm. actually to be able to physically process yeah. those transactions quickly is also quite an investment. <laughs> so that's why Solana pools are really popular. Um, sure. But yeah, definitely <laughs> Tracy Stark, hair weave. <laughs> weave. Yeah, exactly. Next meme coin. <laughs> um, okay, next article we have here. U.S. banking giant Bank of America issues dire economic warning, says shockwave could send crypto and commodities soaring. So why are people linking cryptocurrencies and commodities together when times of macroeconomic uncertainty? Yeah, yeah. I think I think mm. what you have right now is... Utility. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and not just that. Okay, so you have commodities, which is like gold, silver, platinum, palladium, all the, uh, all the gold, uh, metal stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you have, wh which are very hard to transfer, and it's very hard to secure it, which means you have to have trucks, armored vehicles. I mean, lots of steel and stuff, you know, and protection, guns and ammo, whatever. So, and then, you know, it's very costly to send it anywhere in the world. You, you know, like Heidi and I, during the crash of 2020, we bought a bunch of silver. Yeah. And we sent it over to Singapore. Yeah. That was so costly. Yes. Holy cow, man. Oh, but you know, then we sold it. At, we bought it at like, uh, the spot price was $11. And the, then we sold it when the spot price was $27. Just a couple months later, that mm -hmm. was a beautiful buy. We let everybody on our CT club know this. But um, yeah. That was like when we first started doing these live streams. I yeah. Remember that. Yep. Yep. You and I'm like, Heidi, we need to buy, we need archives. to buy. This is so sick. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, that what a steal. I knew it was going to come back. And then you, you know, you sold, but it costs a lot of money. So with Bitcoin, it's cheap. So people are going to choose, I think, Bitcoin well over, way over commodities. I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at the investments, uh, just in, in stocks or commodities, they're both dropping worldwide compared to the amount of people that are, that are starting to buy crypto. Mm -hmm. So it's literally taking over the stock market and it's taking over commodities market because people want a little more freedom. You know, it's open 24 seven. These things are open five days a week. 
you know, why? And, and you imagine trying to s- send your gold somewhere mm. uh, on a weekend? Give me a break. No, you have to wait. Mm. Whereas this, I can send it within fi- five minutes and to anyone yeah. in the world. Anyways. Uh, Flat Smack says, nobody can hack your gold. It is the ultimate privacy coin. I hear you. But also, nobody can hack your private key. Just saying. Uh, the encryption for Bitcoin is rock salad <laughs> and yeah you, that can't be hacked uh you can make a mistake and lose access to it or you know for just a lack of security practices on your end and same with the way that you secure your gold you do it on you do it not well it can be stolen um i, I should i should say yeah. like over the past 100 years there's very few people that have been able to actually hold their gold over the past 100 years I mean, think about it. The, the amount of confiscation that went on around the world, China, Japan, mm-hmm. like uh, even the, I would say the U.S., but they, they didn't force people over, over their gold. But a lot of people gave over their gold. So, you know, at least Bitcoin, you can literally go to the grave with it. I mean, look yeah. at the pharaohs, what happened with, with in Egypt. You know, they they were they tried to, to go to their grave with all their wealth and stuff and guess what happened a couple hundred years later or whatever <laughs> they got dug up and people can became rich again from the pharaohs you know so yeah. bitcoin is literally the only thing in the world that you can hold forever but i think most importantly you can travel with it uh anywhere Try traveling with a bunch of gold. No uh, way. I've done that. We've done that. We, we, a little you bit will get hassled <laughs> if they let you get away with it. <laughs> it's because of the density of it. And, yeah. it, and it's like a, um, a, a so bee. I if, can't say that. If you're trying <laughs> to go where you're treated best, yeah. uh, it's much easier to do so and take your wealth with you with Bitcoin rather than trying to do bank transfers and gold and precious metals. Anyway, Nick Dahmer had a good question. Is there still life in Link? Um, I believe so. I think it's a solid project. It is integrated like so many different smart contracts and dApps and uh, DeFi and DEXs use Link. It's an Oracle uh, program customizable for whatever you might need to be organizing data so that smart contracts can be functioning according to that data properly. Um, That's a huge use case for Link and for anything similar to it. And the fact that they have the majority of the market share in that league. Um, I mean, is there still life in it? Yes. I don't think it's going to go to zero anytime soon, but it has risen obviously a lot. It's in the top of the the list for market cap. It's like the top 20, probably 20 or 30 um, by market cap. So you kind of think of like Bitcoin setting the glass ceiling or whatever, the whatever is the the crypto with the highest market cap, that's kind of the glass ceiling. So it's already raised so much since it first launched. So maybe it's not it's not going to have the same uh, percentage returns as it did right when it first launched. But doesn't mean it's going anywhere. It doesn't mean it's not being used actively, which is y- you can say far less about a lot of other cryptos that are in a similar situation. Yeah. I mean, just because one coin is not pumping doesn't mean it's not good. Yeah, you know, I doesn't... mean, think about Luna, like Luna stayed friggin' not very much money for a very, <laughs> very long time. And people just forgot about it. But I was telling our CT club, Hey, we're buying Luna. Uh, we've been buying Luna for a very long time. And so now it's become popular. Now everybody's talking about it, but but it was a good coin, you know, and they had great devs and we had faith in it. Yeah. And it's like, oh, Michael says, in the, mm-hmm. uh, F- or sorry, FTX. He mentioned FTX. So it's same as FTX. I, I see it as being a massive competitor for with Binance um, as a centralized mm-hmm. exchange. And they're going to offer some really killer things that you can do, like options. I'm sure they have that and, and ETFs and all that stuff. So whatever. About crypto.com. Crypto.com as well, you know, they're I mean, all up there. yeah, exactly. And they're, they're really good at advertising as well. So we'll see what happens, but yeah, I have a lot of faith in coins that still haven't pumped yet. And so I'd rather be mm-hmm. early than, mm-hmm. than late. You know what I mean? And having that state of mind where it might not pump, that's why you don't go all in. Exactly. You exactly. Do it, you know, not financial advice, <laughs> but just something that maybe you can consider <laughs> to do so conservatively. Sure. And then enjoy the the benefits. Of that. Exactly. Um, I did want to touch on this article: Coinbase removing transaction fee for all crypto currency spending within Coinbase card. For those of you who are wondering if maybe you have a brain tumor or what's wrong with my website. 
We have a <laughs> we have a, a browser extension called Toucan, and it helps you learn a second language or a different language. So it like randomly sucks words on the web page you're on, and it magically changes it to the language that you'd like to learn. So we're all learning Portuguese today. We're, I'm trying. <laughs> Why does it say crypto moeda? That's I, you say cryptocurrency. Crypto. No, it's not. Is it? It's Portuguese. I hear people Portuguese saying crypto. Anyways. Everyone says crypto. Okay. Anyways. Uh, okay. So they're trying to incentivize you guys to spend your crypto through their channels um, by removing the transaction fee, which if you guys don't know, if you're moving coins from a centralized exchange like Coinbase to a wallet that you control, Coinbase is the one that imparts the transaction fee. You cannot choose it. It is whatever they have decided they want to, they want to charge you. They are paying for the actual transaction fee on the blockchain of the coin that you're sending. And they always put a little bit on top of that because <laughs> that's their fee. That's one way that they make profit. Um, so they're encouraging you by saying, hey, no transaction fee if you pay using our Coinbase card, which is their debit card or their mobile wallet, whatever. Um, and so Coinbase has been famous for <laughs> I'm not touching them. hiring companies that collect your data yeah. and package it really nicely and sell it off to the highest bidder. So it's this is them. Analysis, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and now, you know, they're just going to make you identify who you're sending it to anyway so they can cut the cost of hiring a data collection service. These guys that. are just ridiculous. So, and they're part of the WAF, I think, right? Probably. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if anything was, it would be Coinbase. Yeah. Um, so I just wanted, like, when I, I wanted to read this off to you because that was my knee-jerk reaction to this article, and I wanted to impart that perspective for anyone who's new. You see this, oh, free transactions. You know the phrase, if it's free, you're the product. Uh, and you are the product where they're incentivizing you to, use payments through their system. They're tracking where you're buying it, how much you're spending it, when, and all that good stuff, which crypto you're sending. Just and... remember the mouse thinks the cheese is free. Yeah. And then they get, they go to mouse heaven. Um, <laughs> I don't know where going with that. I don't know where they go. <laughs> that got dark. Okay, next, next article. Um, <laughs> talk, speaking of the IMF and all these good guys, uh -huh. uh, crypto, they come up with a study, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Uh, crypto use is more rampant in International corrupt International Mafia countries, Federation. Countries, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Countries. So uh, even though the U.S. Treasury Department, like a month ago, came out with a report saying that the activity of cryptocurrency within illicit... The use of crypto in illicit activities yeah. is minuscule compared to other traditional financial That tools. doesn't matter the IMF, does it? Nah. Why? Why would it matter? They, they just should throw just out say, their garbage. They should just say crypto use is more rampant in El Salvador uh, because that's what they're getting Yeah, at, but, uh, these guys are just a bunch of corrupt. corrupt. Cor if, if that's what it means to be a corrupt country is being crypto friendly, then we have different... Uh, translations of that yeah yeah anyways but yeah, really quickly just yeah. uh who was it that that had the uh, large money holders at well was it wells fargo oh oh don't so there we, we brought this up like in the past i know but live stream. It, but it's pretty funny though hsbc oh yeah hsbc had these teller windows uh specifically cut out bigger than than the your average uh teller right um and so this is for drug lords to go ahead and put all their all their cash in there because they had so much cash to launder so they use uh, hsbc and they got caught and yeah that was hilarious i think it was like 800 million dollars worth of cash wow amazing Okay. Yeah, sorry. I was someone was asking the name of the browser extension for the language thing, so I just put it there in the live chat for you guys. Um, IMF is a joke. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Always creating fun. They're really good at it. Yeah, They're definitely. Really bored. So, so <laughs> I I have something to say uh, that with all of these price predictions and stuff that are going on with with crypto, mm -hmm. like people are like, oh, but, you know, if the, if it, if Bitcoin loses this line, it's going down. It's going to crash all yeah. the way down to twenty, and then if it it's goes over, above it's this over. Line, <laughs> if it goes above this line, Until like forty three five hundred, then we're set, or forty four, then then it's good. It's above, guys. Like the crypto market is very manipulated, and you know whales use 
um, like data analytics to figure out like how bullish people are, what prices that people are expecting the prices to go. Um, my friend Ugo, he, he's been on this channel a couple of times and, you know, he's, he gets so frustrated because he's a really good chartist hmm. and he is really good chartist. And, and so he, he would put like, oh, this is where I'm going to buy. Right. So sometimes the price goes within $20 mm-hmm. of his price. And there's like more so than not. And you have to wonder like, why is it like that? Well, it's because he's going over, uh, going, you know, with the trend of like where people are expecting the prices to go, the trend lines, the resistance levels, the uh, support levels. And so a lot of these are actually being completely manipulated. That's why you hardly anybody calls when the price just goes pew, like very few people call. And if they do, a broken clock is right twice a day. So keep that in mind when, when, when hearing people on Twitter, it could be freaking people out. Guys, I don't care what the price does short term. I really couldn't care less, but I still, I, we hold the CT club and people want to know. So I give them my, my thoughts on this. And, you know, I am with, I'm talking to a bunch of very intelligent people all the time who are in this space. And so I can kind of get a roundabout idea of what's going on. Still, price is 100% manipulated, uh, but it doesn't matter because the, the reason why it doesn't matter is because you actually have a set supply that can never increase. The supply is manipulated. Yes, the supply is The not, people buying and selling it are. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> So the supply could be manipulated in other commodities, mm-hmm. you know, like the beers, like the oil cartel, Rockefeller oil cartel or whatever, you know, that, that supply is manipulated all the time um, or, you know, gold or silver. So, but with, with uh, no matter how much demand that happens with Bitcoin, it's never, nobody's ever going to be able to increase the supply to, to, um, Line their own pockets. Exactly, exactly. So that's what's so special about Bitcoin. And I think people are more and more realizing that, that it does have an inelastic supply and that um, that's going to aid its its explosive rise. I mean, we have not seen anything yet on the price of Bitcoin. Like nothing. Like this is a joke. $42,000 for this for Bitcoin, nah, you haven't seen anything yet. I think, yeah, I'm. Ta- I said a million dollars by within five years. I'm sticking to that. You hear that, Nick? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, bring it on, man. Like, I, I mean, come on. I, I see the mass adoption happening, and and what is that? Really quickly, like sixty-five percent of, or no, the amount of coins off exchanges are are on it's exchanges. It's like sixty-three percent. Of the supply is off of exchanges. Yeah. And it's cold storage. 3.5 year lows right now of coins on exchanges right now. So, oh, that number is going to keep rising. Yep. Anyways, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's surprise live stream. Uh, We had to hold it today because tomorrow we might be somewhere else. Uh, So we're going to keep you posted, but we're going to be mysterious until then. Yeah. But I, I just want to ask ask or answer two yeah. more questions. Okay, Jam or Ruger says, is, is really Anthony Sarkamushi bullish on Bitcoin or are what what are these gold people planning? Yeah, he's he's a WEF member. Yeah, and um, they're very interested in crypto because they missed the boat. Mm-hmm. They definitely missed the boat, and that's something that they cannot control. And if you know anything about the World Economic Forum, you know they want full control over everything that they do and everything they put their their minds to, and they can't have it with Bitcoin. And so that's why I think you have like Kathy Woods, you had um, Meltem Demirs, you had um, uh, Anthony, as well as uh, Salinas um, at the Bitcoin conference. These guys, I, I don't trust these people. Anyone from the WF, I don't trust. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, but who knows what their real intentions are. I think what they're going to try to do is figure, try to, you know, maneuver their way into the crypto space and and uh, do something. I don't know. Maybe they're like the Trojan horse. Who knows? I did a video on this a couple of days ago, so check it out. Yeah. Anyways, guys, thank you for in, uh, showing up. Check it out. Yeah. yeah. And uh, please like and subscribe and check us down below for CT Club where you get our trade alerts, portfolio, all that good stuff. Yeah. 
and I will miss you guys. Aw. I will yeah, definitely miss you guys. Yeah, this might be... I mean, we're going to try to do another live stream whenever we can. Yeah. It's definitely not going to be as regularly scheduled as it has been the past six months. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to try to make it work, but... Love you guys, yeah. and we'll see you again really soon. We're going to keep putting out videos every day, yeah. and we have our Discord channel, and in the CT Club, you can always check out the community there and get a lot more activity. So, And we, we will start asking uh, more questions from our CT Club. Get um, ready for those AMAs so again. So that we can do some more AMAs as well. So yeah. anyways, guys, bye-bye. Bye, guys. See ya.